Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Welcome to part four of my series on the Seamarine Pico battery monitor. Today we're going to be looking at how to add tanks to the Pico. We're going to be using this ST107 module to expand the number of inputs that we have reporting to the Pico. Uh, we've got voltage-based and resistance-based inputs on the ST107. And uh, it should be noted that the shunt that we installed in part one of this series also has voltage and resistance based inputs. So we could be doing this demonstration on that shunt, but I uh, wanted to show if you have a lot of tanks or a lot of temperature sensors, or you need to take a lot of voltage readings, something like that, we can expand the system with the ST107 and uh, bring in the tanks and sensors that way. So I've got a couple of sensors that we're gonna be looking at today. I've got a voltage based tank sensor taped to the bottom of the uh, beautiful blue water tank over there. So this is a Safari ultrasonic sensor, and uh, it's actually made for steel propane tanks, but for uh, time constraint reasons, I went ahead and just taped it to the tank. Now they have one that has adhesive that bonds to the plastic tanks like this, but uh, Gorilla Tape did the job for today's demonstration, and we're just going to uh, go into the Pico and I'm going to show you how to take those voltage readings and uh, set calibration points. Basically, we're going to empty the tank and take a reading and then we're going to fill the tank and take a reading. And we can also do this with resistive tank senders. So this would go into the right side of the ST107 and uh, it's just going to go common and then resistance input number one we'll find it on the pico same deal you're going to empty the tank the floater is going to go all the way down you're going to uh, set that as a calibration point whatever that resistance is and then you're going to fill the tank with the floater at the top and you're going to make another calibration point so it's pretty easy for this setup, we're gonna have two calibration points, but in the Pico, you can have up to 10 if you have a weird shaped tank and you need to set multiple points um, along the way between empty and full, you can do that as well. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Now, before we get into it, if you're interested in not just your monitoring, but your overall power system, I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the major charging sources you're gonna have in vans and RVs, which are solar, shore, and alternator power. And uh, it's gonna talk about how they all have strengths, but they each also have weaknesses as well. But brought together in a holistic power strategy, they're gonna make sure that you have a good charge source no matter where you go out on the road. So if you're boondocking out in the desert or you're plugged in at a campground, you're gonna be covered and you're not gonna be worried about running out of power. There's also a discussion on different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those. And that's going to help you narrow in on which battery type is going to be right for your situation. And then lastly, there is a really cool diagram that is essentially your whole system on one page. It's going to show those three charging sources at the top and how that power makes its way through the system, how they come through, play nice together, charge your batteries, and how that power comes out at your end devices, such as your laptop or your phone charger. For instance, how does that solar panel come through and maybe run your stove? So it's a really cool diagram that I think you'll find useful. And uh, all of that is in the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. To grab your own copy, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslupin.com slash vanpower. All right, so with that, let's zoom in on the ST107. I'm gonna show you the connections for the Safari ultrasonic sensor and how I wired that in. All right, so here we are at the ST107, and I wanted to go through the sensor wires here. So this is the Safari sensor coming in. The white wire is not used, and uh, the red wire, as you can see, does not plug into the ST107. That just needs a power source between zero and 30 volts DC. So I have it running back to my 12 volt fuse block. And uh, the other wires are black, for ground and then the yellow is really your wire that's going to report a voltage to the Pico and that's going to be your reading coming in on the yellow wire. You can see I've plugged it into voltage port number one that's designated as the uh, U symbol. That's the international voltage symbol. You can see there is a V above that. But voltage input number one, the Safari sensor is going to report between zero and five volts DC 
through that yellow wire. And you can see we have uh, voltage input two and three if we have additional inputs that we want to measure. In the middle you can see we have an alarm relay. So check out my last video on alarm relays for the Pico. So the Pico can not only set off an audible alarm that shows up on the screen, the screen will flash, but you can tie that alarm to an alarm relay if you want this relay to go off and turn on a light or a pump. Let's say that um, you set off a water tank level alarm to go off when the tank gets too low and this relay is set off and turns on a pump, something like that. So very versatile. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with the alarm relays. And uh, then you can see the resistance inputs on the right side. Let me show you how that resistive tank sensor sender would uh, plug in here. So the brown wire in this case would go to common, C-O-M, and then we would just find R1 for the blue. So the blue would be reporting back the resistance and uh, that's where those wires would go. And then I did want to point out, you can see the data cable coming out of the top. That's going to go over to the splitter for the Seamarine Pico. The splitter is where all the modules plug in and then the splitter itself is going to plug into the back of the Pico screen and report all of that data to the Pico. But at this point, let's go ahead and zoom back out and we'll go ahead and start calibrating our sensor. All right, so to get started with our calibration, what we're gonna do is go ahead and drain the tank as far down as it will go. And I wanted to point out one more thing. So I actually used some uh, KY jelly on this uh, Safari sensor. So with the ultrasonic sensors, they have to have basically solid material between the sensor and the top of the liquid, and you can't have any air gaps in there. And so I talked to Bruce at Safari, and uh, they said you need some kind of gel or coupling. I said, what, yeah, <laughs> what is that specifically? So KY jelly, you can also use dielectric grease if you have some of that, but uh, make sure when you stick that sensor up there, there's no air between the sensor and the bottom of the tank. So with that, let's go ahead and drain our tank. And uh, I'm gonna open the valve here. We're just gonna let it go down as far as it can. And then we're going to um, not get in the Pico. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Seamarine app. So they have a Seamarine app for the uh, Android or Apple devices. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this here We'll zoom in on the phone. We're gonna set up a tank and we're gonna find this uh, voltage sensor number one on the phone and uh, go ahead and start sell setting our calibration points uh, once our tank gets all the way down. And then what we're gonna do is fill the tank back up. We're gonna hit the little pump switch here, fill the tank up and we're gonna get that calibration point there at the top. So at this point, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in on the phone and we'll look at the voltage reading that the sensor is currently sending in. So here we are in the Seamarine app and uh, we're connected via Wi-Fi to the Pico. If you wanna figure out how to do that, definitely check out videos one and two of my series where we talked about the two ways to connect to the Pico over Wi-Fi. But for our purposes, let's go ahead and click the gear icon in the top right and we're gonna click on devices and add new device. We're gonna choose tank. We're gonna choose the voltage-based sensor. And uh, we're gonna come in and let's rename it to fresh water. And the fluid type can be water, fuel, or wastewater. Let's go ahead and keep it as water sensor type voltage, the actual sensor is not set. Let's go ahead and pick one. So it's gonna be the ST107 input one. And uh, on the capacity, I'm gonna go ahead and set that at the end. It's currently reading 100 liters. Let's set our calibration points first. So add new calibration point. And this is the current sensor value. So this is why it's important to uh, empty the tank or fill the tank because it's going to take a reading and we're going to use that reading and we're going to tie it to a certain number of gallons. So the tank does have a little bit of fluid in it right now, but I've drained it as far down as I can. So for our purposes, I'm going to call that zero gallons. 
and then we're going to click the button to use the current sensor value and associate that voltage value from the sensor with the uh, volume of zero gallons. So I'm going to click save. So we have our first calibration point. So at this point, let's go ahead and fill the tank back up and uh, we'll set a second calibration point. All right, so let's go ahead and close the valve and we will fill the tank back up. All right, so I've got the tank filled up about as high as I can get it. At this point, let's go back into the Seamarine app and we're going to set another calibration point for when the tank is completely full. So now that our tank's full, we're gonna add a second calibration point. Let's go ahead and click add new calibration point. You can see our sensor value has gone way up. So let's click to add and use that sensor value and let's associate it with a five gallon full tank um, now it didn't completely get full, so we could put 4.9, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use five gallons as a full tank here. I'm going to click save and you can see we have our two calibration points in there and we're going to hit the back button and we need to click done. So we've got our two calibration points. Um, actually, we need to change the capacity here. And uh, I already have my units set up as US gallons, so it knows we're using gallons. I'm going to click five. OK, it's changed to five gallons. We're going to click done. And you can see under our devices, we now have the freshwater tank. So if we go back out, there's an icon that says tanks at the bottom. If we click that, you can see we've got five gallons and 100% full on our freshwater tank. I wanted to show one more item. Uh, let's see if we go back, let's set an alarm. Let's go ahead and drain the tank down to 50% and I'm going to show you what happens when an alarm goes off. So we'll click on alarms, add new alarm, and we can set off an alarm with any of these sensors. Um, so there's our freshwater tank. So we're going to choose it alarm low and then we can also do alarm high so when the level gets too low or too high we can set those off so let's turn on the alarm low and the percent value in the tank let's say when the tank gets down to 50 percent we're going to make it ridiculously high so when the tank gets down to half we're going to have the alarm go off uh, silent alarm we don't want that we do want to hear it beep Alarm delay, let's do, uh, okay, 20 seconds is the minimum. We'll go ahead and leave it. Now output, this is where you can set off that alarm relay. So if you wanted to turn on a pump or a buzzer, uh, you could do that. But the Seamarine Pico itself will have an audible alarm. So um, that relay could be used for a motor or a light, something like that. So let's click Save Settings. And uh, there's our alarm. Let's take a look at how the tank shows up in the Pico itself. So this is the main screen that I have set up. And uh, if we hit the down arrow, you can see there's the battery detail page. This is a quadra shunt that we had set up in a previous video. I believe it was uh, part two of this series. So check that out if you want to learn about the quadra shunt. And uh, here is our tanks page. So if you add more than three tanks, you'll just have page after page after page of tanks. So you can add, I uh, believe it's up to 14 tanks. Um, I could be wrong, but you can add a, a ton of water tanks to the Pico. Um, now, as far as the colors, we have it designated as a water tank. So it's gonna be blue. Fuel tanks are gonna be yellow and wastewater tanks are going to be green. Now, what's really cool about this is all the tanks will turn red uh, fuel or water tanks below 20%, they're going to turn red. And then for the wastewater tank, it's normally green, but once it hits above 85%, it's going to turn red. So I, I really like that. If you're in trouble, you're running out of water, you're running out of fuel, or your wastewater tank is getting overfilled, 
um, it's going to turn red so that you have that visual indication that there's a problem. But at this point, let me go ahead and open the valve on the tank and let's drain it and uh, I want you to see the alarm go off. All right, so we just crossed under 50%, so our alarm delay is starting. So we've got that 20 second delay, but I wanted to show you when it crosses below 20%, the uh, indicator should turn red. Okay, so our alarm is going off and uh, the tank, let's hit dismiss. You can see it turned red. So the tank is actually completely drained over there. So it's going to go ahead and go down to zero. So you're going to be able to see it go from 100% to zero here and uh, run the full gamut. Hopefully my calibration is set up correctly. <laughs> Three, two, one. But, um, as you can see, when you're in trouble and you're running out of fuel or running out of water, uh, it's gonna turn red and uh, let you know. All right, there we are at 0%. That's my video on how to add water tank sensors to the Seamarine Pico. I hope that was useful. Again, if you want even more help with your overall power system, you gotta grab a copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.